everyone, it's John. Um, I just I wanted to get some video out for you this week. First of all, I just want to give you guys a huge thank you for all of your support this week. Uh, the messages on Twitter, uh, on the Gary tribute video, they have meant the world to both me and my wife, Vera. I appreciate each and every one of them. Thank you guys so, so much for, for supporting us in this very, very tough time. Um, that little guy was the world to me. And I, I occasionally get contact from um, certain brain scratchers where they want to make sure I have a good support network here because of the kind of stuff that I'm looking into. And I have some really good friends that live really, really close. We spend a lot of time with them. Of course, I've got my wife, but outside of that, our cats are a major part of my daily joy. So losing Gary was really, really tough. Um, I just, I love that little guy and uh, it was really, really hard to let him go. So um, thank you. Thank each and every one of you out there. Uh, something else that you might see that looks interesting today, I'm having to re-release a brain scratch that actually came out, I think over a year and a half ago because of a copyright claim, which was super lame and I just didn't want to fight it. So I basically re-edited the video and took out the content that they were questioning. It is the Travis Walton case, which if you're not familiar with it, if you haven't seen that brain scratch before, I highly recommend it. I'm basically looking into um, the Travis Walton story as well as a couple of other AI alien stories, talking about those. The Travis Walton story might be one of the most famous alien abduction stories to ever happen. Uh, I assure you the episode did not lose anything in me taking out the clip that was being questioned. Uh, if anything, all it did was stop that show from getting attention that it hasn't had in probably decades at this point. I really, I don't know what these guys are thinking. <laughs> they, they were trying to take revenue that was probably getting to the point where it was about a dollar a month. Um, by making that lame copyright claim. So whatever, a uh, new version is out today. So you might see that drop today. If you haven't checked it out, please do check it out. But on top of that, uh, this is something that was actually developing from last week that I wanted to talk to you guys about. And that is the Sherry Papini case, which at this point uh, is clearly not a searchlight anymore because we know she's back. And I think it's starting to slide more into brain scratch territory because the big question out there is, is she telling the truth or not? Are we getting the straight story from her? Um, I've really struggled with this one and it's tough because I don't want to go down the path of victim blaming here. I feel like something really, really bad happened to this woman. Um, and I, I don't think that I don't think we could even say that it was some type of thing that uh, she put herself into. I mean, I guess there's a very small number of people out there that are suffering in some way where it's so bad that they might be able to harm themselves like this. But you're talking about her losing, uh, you know, almost 15% of her body fat while she was abducted, coming back with a broken nose, her hair had been chopped, um, bruises all over her body, and some type of branding mark on one of her shoulders. I don't think... I don't know if someone could do that to themselves. I really, really struggle with that. But we do have some new information that has kicked up on it. Um, as you can see here on just a Google News search, there are tons of new articles um, spinning around this. And here, Shasta County um, Sheriff's Office has done a full press release on it. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but I'll have a link to it in the description box below. And we're going to talk about some of the bigger points that are brought out in this press release as we go through several articles. Um, the major thing to come out of this press release is we now have some type of composite sketches. Um, I, I got to tell you guys, I struggle with these composite sketches in terms of value. Um, I don't think that anyone could look at these composite sketches and say, oh, I know that person. I, I really think that I, I don't, I'm not even sure why these are putting out there outside of this is what her story is. But at this point, a year later, we're getting composite sketches where essentially all you can see is the top half of a person's face. I just, I'm really struggling with what the value is in these composite sketches. Um, outside of that, they did release the 911 call that her husband made, which I listened to the whole thing. Nothing in terms of really pertinent information, nothing that could help this case pretty much in any way is released there. Once again, I'm questioning why, 
Why are they releasing this stuff like this? I really don't know. But we now have the MP3 uh, of the husband's phone call. Um, outside of that, and this is a bit of an interesting twist, DNA evidence has been found. Uh, it's been almost a year since Redding mother Sherry Papini was abducted while jogging in Shasta County and then unexpectedly freed weeks later. On Wednesday, the Shasta County Sheriff's Office released new details in the mysterious case, saying that the DNA of two other people was found on Papini. Uh, the samples belonged to a woman and a man which is kind of interesting because in the story that we've heard, she's abducted by two women. Um, and from what she has said, she was not sexually assaulted in any way. Uh, the DNA samples were submitted to the FBI. Um, they don't belong to Sherry or her husband. They also don't belong to another person that we're going to talk about as we roll forward here. Um, and then this article goes on to, of course, talk about the sketches that were released as well. And this is from latimes.com. But Let's jump ahead to the Inquisitor. Um, authorities now say they have surveillance footage of Sherry running after her captors released her. Once again, I just have to ask, what, so, I mean, I don't want to come off that way, but so what? What, what, what kind of help is this? Yes, we know that at some point she came running by a road, someone saw her, called the police, picked her up. Now they're saying, well, we've got surveillance footage of her running by the road. It's not helpful, and I don't know why this information is coming out in this way outside of the fact that I believe um, the sheriff that is working on this case, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, um, that he believes that she was truly abducted. And he might be uh, in terms of what I'm seeing in terms of public opinion, he might be one of the few that still believes that she was actually abducted. Is that why this information is trickling out in this way? Hey, we've got DNA profile. Hey, we've got, uh, you know, these new composites. Now we've got footage of her running after her captors released her. It would have been different if they were saying we have footage of her release. You know, we now have a vehicle that we can look at and say, uh, have you guys seen this van? Uh, we know that it was this color. We know it was driving in this area. But once again, that's not what we're getting. We're just getting, oh, yeah, we've got footage of her leading up to the time that we found her, which is really not helpful. And I'm not even sure how newsworthy or, or interesting it is. Jumping over to people.com we learn about the mystery Michigan man. So apparently Sherry was having some form of text relationship with a guy that was living in Michigan. And apparently he did travel to California before she was abducted. But authorities are saying that they don't have any uh, proof that they actually wound up meeting up. Uh, quote, the text messages went back several months to days before her disappearance, Shasta County Sheriff Sergeant Brian Jackson tells People. It was a prior contact that she had years before, somebody she met and kept in contact with, a male acquaintance she was talking with through texting. Jackson would not specify whether or not their relationship was romantic. Jackson says the acquaintance had visited California, but not Redding, days before Papini went missing, adding that there is no indication they met up. Jackson says investigators went to Michigan to speak to the acquaintance and then ruled him out as having anything to do with the abduction. Um, and finally, one more article from People.com. A sergeant investigating the 2016 alleged abduction of California mom Sherry Papini says he believes Papini's account that she was kidnapped by two Hispanic females. There is no information that would indicate that it is not true, Shasta County Sheriff's Office Sergeant Brian Jackson said, uh, who was one of the first investigators to interview Papini. Um, Papini told investigators that during her abduction, she got into an altercation with the younger suspect in the bathroom when she was allowed to shower, Jackson says. Jackson says Papini reported that she had cut the side of her foot during the confrontation, but that when photographs of Sherry were being reviewed at the hospital, there was no evidence of such cuts. Jackson says authorities have ruled out sex trafficking as a motive for her abduction, Quote, just on the facts that we know, it doesn't seem to be a sex trafficking or a sexual abduction in nature. And that is what we are trying to figure out. What was the purpose, he said. 
then it talks about the male and female DNA that was found on her. Um, Jackson says Papini's alleged female abductors gave her clothing to wear. Therefore, he says it's possible that the clothing that was provided to Sherry are clothes that belong to somebody who was an acquaintance of the captors. And hopefully down the road, once we get these females identified, we will get the answers for that. Really interesting to me that he's thinking about that in that direction. Wouldn't most people that had a DNA profile say, I hope we find matches to these DNA profiles that can lead us to these two females? But no, he's saying that, yeah, we'll figure out who those DNA profiles are after we find the females. I just, I don't know, guys. I'm not having a great feeling about this case. Uh, the DNA sample did not belong to the Michigan man either, is also noted on here. And once again, says that he has been ruled out as a suspect. So just to be as honest as I can about this case, um, I'm still frustrated by it. I don't know what to believe and what not to believe. Um, I feel like we haven't been told the complete story, even according to the information that sheriffs are putting out. Sherry has not given them a detailed statement. Uh, we're now hearing about these things where she was being allowed to take a shower. I would have to assume that she wasn't being blindfolded while that shower was happening, but we're not getting any details about where she was being kept, where these showers were happening. Uh, maybe if she could have noticed some other things about these females in terms of, we don't even have body types on these females. Literally, all we have are those descriptions that lead to the composites, what their eyes look like, their eyebrows look like, and their hair. And that's it. So I'm struggling with this. And one of the best points that I heard raised by the sheriff, um, the investigator for the sheriff's department was, what is the motive in this case? There is no robbery. It does not seem to be sexually motivated. I believe if she was abducted by two women, these women knew her. There might be something in her past. And I know that there has been some talk about uh, some potentially racially motivated statements made by her when she was much younger. But there's got to be something in her past that would lead to these two women. You just don't pick up someone for, I mean, I guess the one exception would be if this was a pure hate crime. If this was, hey, you know, do you see that blonde, blue eyed girl running on the sidewalk? For some reason, we want to pick her up and torture her for two weeks and then let her go. That could be the only thing outside of that. I, I can't come to a good understanding of what this is. I just, I don't get it. I don't get what the motive is for this crime. Uh, I don't get the lack of detail around this. I kind of feel like investigators, uh, maybe they're working on a lot more information than, the, than they're releasing, but if they are, I don't think they're doing a good job of really uh, getting the public's help. I mean, on this case, they're talking about that they've got 600 tips on this case. And sure, 600 tips kind of sounds like a lot, but I got to tell you, for a lot of missing person cases I review, 600 tips isn't all that much. Usually we have them in the thousands. Um, is there something else going on with this story, guys? I feel like there is. I just can't put my finger on what it is. But I'm stuck because I don't think that this woman tortured herself in that way just so she could come back to a home life maybe that she was trying to leave before. I, I just, I'm really struggling with all that. Um, but the lack of detail on this, it's just, it's almost like the sheriffs are saying, we don't want your help, but we want to convince you guys that what she went through was real. That's kind of the message I'm getting, at least through the press release they've put out and the media that we're seeing around this case. And that's not a very good message. It makes me feel like something's up. What do you guys think? Let's talk about it in the comments below. And once again, I ask we please be respectful here. I know people have a lot of very strong feelings about this case, but let's share them respectfully um, and let's try to figure out what's going on with this one because I don't know. I need you guys' help. Thank you so much for joining me here. Um, like I said, another Brain Scratch being re-released today. Please check it out if you haven't seen it before. Um, and I will see you back on the Lord and Arch channel on Monday for Johnny Vlogs. Take care. Have a great weekend. See you then.